What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ben the Jeep Guy. Uh, today's video, we're gonna make it real quick and short and simple. It's gonna be a little bit informal, uh, but I saw that there is no information online uh, about doing the Banks iDash or Data Monster installation in a JL or JT um, with their custom pod mount. So I wanna show that to you guys um, and do a quick little kind of informal install over it. So. Um, Let's take a look at what all the things that we're going to be installing today. All right, here's everything that we got. Uh, we got the Banks Data Monster. I went with the Data Monster because it stores data. I don't know if I would ever need that, but it seemed like something that would be smart. If you do not care about you know, like storing data and looking at it later, uh, save your money and go with just the plain old iDash. It, th this one has a uh, little memory card slot. The iDash, as far as I understand it, does not have one. Um, so if you want to log data, get this, get the data monster. If you don't care, then just get save the money and get the iDash. Now, this is the bank's uh, gauge pod mount. This is, and you can see on there, it says lower A pillar mount. This mounts on the A pillar at the bottom of the grab handle. They also have one that goes at the top of the grab handle, but I didn't like that location as much as where this one's going to be. I'll go into a little bit more of why I think this is a better location for daily driving and stuff like that, but you know, you may find that you'd prefer it in, at the upper location. So this is, this is the one that I went with and I'll explain why here in a little bit, but it also comes with several different bits of tools and it has a step bit um, to drill out for the wire that you got to run through here. Um, and then we got the data monster over here and I'll actually turn this over. So that's the that's the model number, the 66760. That's the one that works with the Jeeps if you don't have the Derringer or the Pedal Monster. Um, and then the gauge pod mount, that is 63377. That's the one for the lower A-pillar mount. So that's it. I mean, there's not a whole lot left in the box. There's just a few little odds and ends. You know, this is just the cable that runs down to the OBD2 port and plugs in down there. It does have, it does actually come with a memory card and a little uh, thing to help you in, um, upload the data into it. So it's very cool. Let's get this installed. All right, so you can see here's your A-pillar and basically behind these little caps, you pull those off and inside of there is some bolt, a bolt so that you can uh, pull the grab handle and the A pillar um, trim here off. Uh, so you can either put it up here, this is where the upper mount goes, or you pop off the lower one, and I believe that'll actually come out, but uh, it goes up in here. So I kind of mocked it a, a little bit. So that's where it ends up sitting. And I, I like that location better than up top. Uh, I, I like it being down closer to where my actual gauge cluster is so that, you know, when I'm looking at stuff on the gauges, uh, the factory gauges, I can just quickly glance up and see any information that I want on the banks. Uh, where up here, I feel like it's just going to be a little bit more in the way. So I like this location. So that's why I went with that one. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's try to get this thing installed. All right. So. We've already popped the little caps off. We're going to work on getting the bolts out of the upper and lower mounts. They're 10 millimeter bolts, so I'm just using regular old ratchet, and we're going to get this guy out. And this one too. Oh, I do want to say something real quick. Normally, a lot of these instructions will say like, hey, you need to disconnect the battery. I mean, they say you got to disconnect the battery and instructions for just about everything under the sun. And I've always kind of chalked that up to the lawyers for these companies. Just make them say that so nobody accidentally crosses a wire or whatever. I don't know. Well, you know, you, you could be doing a lift kit and they're like, hey, you know, make sure to disconnect your battery. Why? Why? I'm changing shocks. Why? But anyways, that's me ranting a little bit. But with this one... These instructions do tell you to disconnect the negative battery cables uh, from the um, battery. And the reason for that is there is actually a airbag right in here. There's a curtain airbag in here. And that's the one thing that I don't, I try not to mess around with is when it comes to airbags. Because you set off an airbag accidentally. First off, it'll have your ears ringing, may hit you in the face. Who knows what else is going to uh, happen. Uh, and on top of that, those airbags are very expensive uh, to replace. Especially on something newer like this where you can't just run to a junkyard um, like you can with the older Jeeps. So 
because of that, I did disconnect the negative battery cables for this one, just because we're working with airbags. All right, the instructions also said to move this, uh, remove this grate, and they said just grab a plastic pry tool. So we're gonna do that. All right, removed. So now we're gonna yank this off. All right. So uh, apparently my Jeep didn't come with the airbag right here supposed to be right there. I don't know why, but I didn't need to disconnect the battery. <laughs> now this is a Sport S model, so that probably is why that's not, the, the airbag isn't right there. I kind of figured it would be, or maybe it's because it's a 22, and maybe the 24s have it now. I don't know. But anyways, I was just following the instructions. The instructions said, there's an airbag here. Disconnect your battery. So depending on what year you have, you might not have to do that as importantly because you may not have an airbag there. So check and make sure you got airbags or not. But I don't want anybody coming back and blaming me. So I'm just going to follow along with everybody else and, and do what the lawyers say. Disconnect your battery. All right. So now that we've got that out, uh, we need to start getting ready to uh, route the wires. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, drill out this hole for the wire to pass through. Um, so I'm going to go over that here in just a second once I kind of figure it out. All right. So in the instructions to get the little cap off, it said to pinch this little Christmas tree kind of looking thing. Pinch that and it'll go through that slot. So let's see. Not easy one hand. Let's see if we can do it. Let's go ahead and shove it on there. Yep, that worked. So they also say in the instructions to hang on to it. You know, you never know if you're going to go back to stock. So I'm going to put this in my little uh, save pile of Jeep parts. You never know. I might end up deciding that I don't like the lower mount and I want to do the upper mount and I'm going to want this guy back. So I'm going to hang on to that. Now I'm going to mark my hole right here and get that drilled, but I need two hands, so we'll see you back here in a second. All right, you can see I've made my mark. They say to use like a silver Sharpie. I didn't have one, so I used a black one and it marked fine. You can see I started to drill in and then I was like, nope, I need to show this. So uh, we marked our hole and everything, and the way you do that is you slide the mount in place right there, make sure it's nice and snugly fit, and then if you look down in there, I don't know if, you, if it's showing up on the camera very well. You can cut, there it is. You can see you can take the Sharpie and go down a hole through the back side of it and mark your hole. So that one obviously looks real good. So I'm going to keep drilling where I'm at. That should end, end up with my hole in the right place. So yeah, I'm going to get back to drilling this and I'll show you guys what it looks like in, when I'm done. All right, got my hole drilled. Uh, the step big worked pretty good. Um, they do tell you in the instructions to mark it off at the 16 millimeter spot because uh, that's as big as you want the hole to go to. So we marked it off at 16 millimeters. I think it's, yeah, see, the, you can see the 14 is exposed and then we're overlapping the tape over the 16. So we are actually drilling it out to the 16 size. That's the one thing I had to kind of check the instructions back and forth and see how they worded it. But anyways... Um, the step bit worked out really well. There was like a, a lot of leftover material on the other side that where the step bit couldn't drill all the way through. Um, so all I did was take a razor knife and I just cut it out from the backside and now it's a nice clean looking hole. Now, the next thing that we got to do is we got to actually run the wire from the OBD2 port up through the dash and get it up here so that we can pull it through as we try to mount the, uh, a pillar trim back so we're gonna have to pop this off we're gonna use the plastic pry tool and pop that off and try to see if we can fish that wire down get the obd2 port plugged in and then we'll have our wire coming out up here 
and then uh, get it all put back on and get our gauge uh, put in the mount, connect it up, we'll connect the battery back and we'll be good to go. So let's get the rest of this done. All right, so I've done some wire fishing. We've got the OBD2 port plugged in, wire runs up that way and then it comes through it might not show up in the camera very well, but there's a little gap right down in there. Right down in there. You can see um, I've got a little, I guess it's a quality control mark or something. And then there's this little lower cutout. And then right back there, right back in there, there's a little bit of a gap that you can fish the wire through. It's a little tight. I actually had to push on the plastic dash a little bit right here uh, to get some plastic to move out of the way just enough to fish it through. But I got it up. And I got it back through there and then it's gonna pop out right here. And then I've already fished it through the hole in the A-pillar mount. So I'm gonna mount this and then uh, I'm gonna get the gauge uh, on wherever it ran off to. And uh, that way I can go ahead and kind of gauge how much length that I need. And then I can pull the wire back through here a little bit, coil it up, zip tie it together, leave it right back there and put my panel back on. So I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second. All right, so we've got this back in place. Um, you can see there's a lot of slack here. So I'm gonna end up, you know, pulling it back. So just like that. And then I'm gonna coil it up down here. And then I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna go ahead and fish the wire through that hole that we made our mark through in the back and slip it up into here. Now the instructions made sure to really, Leave that there for a second. There's a little washer that comes with this bolt. They're gonna we're gonna replace the 10 millimeter bolt factory bolt with this bolt uh, because it's easier to get this tool, this Allen tool with the little ball head on it. See, um, it's easier to get that up in through the mount than to try to get the factory bolt back in there. It won't it won't fit. So we're gonna uh, try to get this bolt in there and then we're gonna tighten it with the tool provided. Uh, however. The bolt does come with a washer. Now they said that it needs the you need to move the washer all the way up against the head. If it's out here somewhere, then it as you're tightening it, it they said it could bind and you know get sideways and get and bind and cause you know maybe this breaks or something doesn't get or whatever. So just they made a point of it. I'm making a point of it. So now we're gonna try to get this slipped up into there through the mount, which is challenging in itself. I'm going to tr start by actually fishing the bolt through and see if maybe that helps a little bit. So I've got my bolt fished through. Now I'm fishing the wire through. And I'm going to take my tool and go ahead and stick it in the Allen bolt. And now we've got our Allen bolt in. A threaded nut cert that's in the A-pillar. So now we are just tightening down. All right. So yeah, uh, I will say, don't, don't do what I did and tighten that thing tight. But even still, that lower one, it was a lot tighter going back in. It's not like these upper bolts were just free moving in. This did not want to tighten. It was very difficult. I don't know why, but it was. So now you can see, even with it tightened, I can move this back and forth. So I can now adjust this and, uh, and get it all taken care of. Um, now, one thing that they did note in the instructions, because the instructions for doing the lower mount is the same instead of instructions for the upper mount, they do note the differences in the instructions. So when one needs something different from the other, they make sure to like make note of that. Um, if you're doing the upper mount, see these little studs? You have to take a Dremel and, and, and cut them off. But since we went with the lower ones here, or lower one, we don't have to cut it off. Apparently this is a little tighter fit to try to get it up here. And so there's not a lot of room for the studs and the actual uh, gauge. But down here we got more room. So again, another plus for the lower A-pillar mount if you're uh, on the fence. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in like that. Now there's no bolts, like these studs don't do anything for the Jeep installation. Um, they've got little uh, pressure 
things that are cast into the mount itself that put enough pressure on it that uh, keep it from actually coming out. So that's it, that, that's mounted. So you can even kind of adjust it. So if you wanna get it just where, you you know, the angle just right, you can get in there and and adjust it a little bit more. So that's gonna be good for now. Uh, now I'm going to coil up the wire down here in the side and I'll show you guys what that looks like before I put the panel back on, but we're gonna to get to that now. All right, got our wire bundled up. You can see I zip tied it in two places, kind of tighten it up super tight. And I left a little bit of extra slack so that if we have to pull this out, we have a little extra slack that'll slide up through there and back. And so we uh, we can tuck it around back there, but it's kind of a, and it will fit and the trim panel will fit just fine. Uh, but it's a little bit of a challenge to get it in there. You kind of got to do it multi-handed because uh, this trim piece best suits as it rolls in because so you can see the trim actually goes behind this little lip on the body and uh, so we've got to actually roll it in and so you have to kind of like tuck it in the back and then like slip it in as you fold that piece so it's a it's an interesting way of doing it but it does fit and it will hide it um, so if you're working on this this is possible right here uh, so we're going to get that put away and I'll show you guys that it does in fact fit and not bulge out or show or anything like that. All right, guys, I don't know. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, see, it'll fit back there. Okay. And see how I got it. It's already behind that little lip. And then you just line up your little push tabs. Like I said, you got to kind of roll it in a little bit as you're working at it. And then... Just like that, see, disappeared. So it does fit, it's not a big deal. It all lines up. And it looks great. Now I'm gonna go hook up the uh, battery cables and see if this thing will turn on. All right, that's it, fully installed. So you can see, I like that location. It's a short distance to look up to that. If I was already looking down here at the gauge cluster, where if I wanted to look at the upper A pillar mount, it's all the way up here. So this seems like a safer way to view that information. But again, that might not work for everybody's setup. That's just what feels comfortable to me. And I did figure out that you have to fully turn the vehicle on before this thing will do anything. I tried hitting the button, the start stop button, for the accessory, nothing on still nothing and then i have to actually start it and that's when we will get the uh i dash to kick on so that's what the whole thing looks like everything lit up i'm really liking the way this looks and i can't wait to start monitoring data and being able to watch like exhaust gas temperatures and dpf level and and soot load and all those different things can be viewed right here on this i dash so i'm i haven't really decided what all i'm going to put up here just yet i haven't decided my layout so i'm going to be uh, working on that uh here soon and just trying to play around with it decide what i want to see what i like seeing um but i love the way it looks it just feels like it belongs there I, i'm stoked guys this is awesome so uh with that being said i think we're going to wrap up the video for today so thanks for watching guys i really appreciate it um from the bottom of my heart um you know i'm not a big youtube star or anything like that uh so you know i truly appreciate all of the views and the likes and the comments and stuff like that. So I really appreciate it a lot so much. Um, and then speaking of comments, got the comment section down below. If you got any questions um, or if you didn't like today's video, and you want to tell me why, please be nice. I, but I do accept constructive criticism. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, give me a thumbs up if you like today's video and make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Um, I don't put out too much. Um, it's not as often as I would have preferred, certainly not as often as I had intended to start in this channel, but I do try to get something out every now and then when I can. And, uh, and I like to make sure that they're like really helpful videos like today's video. There wasn't really a video out there for how to install Banks iDash and gauge mount, um, in a Jeep. So that's what I wanted to do. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. And until next time, keep jeeping.